Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. So you guys have asked for it, so that's what this week is. It's a resin and natural material combination inlay. So what I'm going to do is I recently took this walnut bowl out of my fridge kiln and it has a knot that goes through the top here to the other side. So what I'm going to do is cut that out of there, cut a groove in the rim of this bowl, and we're going to inlay resin and natural materials. So that's this week's video. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how you guys like it and kind of my thoughts on where I want to go with this. So anyway, what we're going to do is get a glue block and get it mounted, uh, glued onto the bottom of this bowl, get it on the lathe, trued up, and then we'll see what we're looking at. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And of course, anytime you give my videos a thumbs up, it certainly helps with the analytics. So let's, uh, let's get a glue block on this. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's video. So yeah, before we can do any inlay work on this, of course we have to uh, get the outside and the inside trued up. So again, I'm using a 5 8 bowl gouge. And um, this footage isn't sped up here at all. This is actually in real time. Uh, and as you can see, I mean, there's really no substitute for a sharp gouge. Yeah, so I forgot to turn the camera on when I was doing the rim. That's certainly not a first. And so, yeah, start the bowl gouge on its side. Get yourself a shoulder. And then that way, that gives the bevel something to ride on. And, of course, that's your control so that you don't uh, cut in too deeply or get a catch. Here's the area we're going to cut out and you know I'm not just going to go like this. I want something with a little bit of style, a little bit of flair. Go a little deeper down into the bowl. Hopefully you can see that. Something like that. Yeah, so you've seen me use these burrs a lot on my channel. Um, they're the typhoon bits that you can get. Uh, I actually get mine at Lee Valley here in Canada. And there is actually a link in the description below for that. But they do a really, really good job. And they, they the, and the other big thing about them is they last long. Again, that's a typhoon bit. Again, that's another really, uh, it, it's an aggressive bit. But when you're working in hard materials, it certainly uh, is very effective.
Yeah, so we're using the 3 16 parting tool here to cut in a, a groove for our inlay. I really needed a bowl with a wide rim to um, kind of do this inlay that I wanted to do. Okay, so I got myself a piece of clear plastic. We'll see. Of course, I'm wearing a glove because this is hot. There, I guess that. I wish that was a little flatter, but well. So, along with this, I'm also going to tuck tape it. You've seen me use this before. This, of course, is vapor barrier tape. Really good tape. So I'll just seal up the edges here. And hopefully, we won't have any leaks. There, hopefully that'll make a good glue dam and it won't get by it. Now what I'm going to do is run a bead of glue, hot melt glue, all around the outside and the inside so that the resin doesn't spill over into the bowl. So our natural material is going to be black pearl soapstone. Now, if you've been here before, you know that when I make these, my inlay materials, I like to use a sieve and I'm going for the fine material. In this case, I'm actually going for the coarse material and that way the resin should flow through it. Theoretically, that's what I'm trying to do here anyway. So anyway, I'll pick out any of the really big chunks and um, smash them down a little bit further. I don't want them to be too big. Anyway, I'll bring you in when I get done here. So here's our granular material. Okay, so we're going to be using the Pro Series from Designer Epoxy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up Nine ounces of it. Nine ounces should be plenty. So it's two parts A. So six ounces. And three ounces of B. Now this has a open time of about an hour. So hopefully it's not gonna be a problem. And while I'm mixing this, <laughs> what do you think of this? So mother of pearl, neon white or neon yellow, can you imagine? And after I'm assuming this this black soapstone would be just like uh, when you use the CA glue. Once this resin goes on and hits it, it'll probably turn it black. So that would make quite a statement. There's no doubt about that. But I don't think I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I just can't do it. Um, I'm thinking maybe the mother of pearl. I think that's really where I'm gonna where I want to go with this. And this may be way too much resin, but what I've got is a, a bigger one of these containers and I'm just laying it in on top of each other. And then eventually when I get enough of it, I'll have a turning blank. That way it doesn't get wasted. So 
So the way I'm going to do this is I want you guys to be able to see. So I'm going to put a little bit of the granulated soapstone in the inlay areas and then I'm going to pour the epoxy over top of it and I'm just going to keep building it out in layers. Theoretically the soapstone is heavier than the epoxy so it should sink to the bottom anyway and fill in any gaps. This is that um, the actual bowl is actually pretty tight to get into the pressure pot. So I may have to finish it off inside the pressure pot. So I'm going to put two quarter teaspoon spoons of this in there first. And we'll see what it looks like. I don't want it to be translucent at all. I want it to be pretty much a solid color. Now I've only ever mixed this stuff by hand. Um, any in there using some sort of power mixers or anything like that? If you are, uh, tell, comment down below and tell me what you're using. I know the air bubbles are definitely an issue, so I definitely try and want to stay away from any of that. I do find it takes a little bit to try and get this mother of pearl mixed in here though. Yeah, that's almost a solid color on the stick. Once this gets up to the bottom level of that, I will uh, put some in the groove. Yeah, I'd say mixed, mixed up way too much resin. And of course I would prefer not to do that. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, if there are any voids in this. And of course, when this sets, I'm going to cut this way back. That way, everything should be relatively even with stones. There, let's go get this in the pressure pot. I think I'll put a piece of tape on there. I didn't think that uh, it's going to be that low. So I've seen others doing this on YouTube, so I figured it was a good idea. And anyway, once this gets filled up, um, we'll put it on the lathe and make something with it. See you tomorrow. So yeah, this inlay was really, really hard. Uh, this is the first time that I've really encountered this uh, with the resin. And of course, you know, it's the natural materials that seem to probably be what's making this so hard that soapstone's quite hard. Yeah, and when I seen that the gouge wouldn't cut it any longer, I, I moved to the uh, Easy Wood Tools rougher, and that 
was really the only thing that I could use uh, to cut that inlay. So here I'm pointing out the difference between a gouge surface on the bottom of the bowl and the scraped surface from these um, scraping tools. They're, they're great at turning or scraping back that material, but they don't leave exactly the best um, surface finish or surface condition. So that's, you know, when I say that I, I prefer to use a gouge, that's one of the main reasons. But in this case, the gouge wasn't able to actually cut that inlay. So, you know, if I didn't have those carbide scrapers, it would have been a lot of sanding. So, you know, they certainly hold a place in my work. Um, now that I'm combining resin and natural materials, they may even play a bigger part in my work. Yeah, and this is the finisher, and I like to just use this to come in, especially on the inside of these um, these bowls or vessels that I've been doing lately, to just clean up um, clean up what the rougher leaves behind or what the gouge leaves behind. Typically, when you've got a hard inlay, you're going to get tear out on either side of it as the the gouge or the tool that you're using kind of hits that inlay and then bounces over it. So these carbide tools, especially this finisher, does a good job of cleaning that up. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed earlier, but there's actually um, a little piece of the inlay material missing. So, you know, I'm just kind of grinding down the inlay area to try and get rid of that. There you can see it there. Again, I tried the gouge on the outside of that and it just, it's fine on the, on the lower part of the bowl, but once you get up near that inlay material, forget it, it's not happening. So back to the finisher. Sanding from 60 to 800, again with the three and a half inch dimple discs from sandpaper.ca. And don't forget there's a link in the description for 10% off your next order.
So buffing here with uh, Triple E, and this is from the Be All Buffing System. And again, I like to just do the inlay materials, uh, the area first before we turn the lathe on. And that gets rid of any little scratches. Um, you know, if I'm working on a whole resin project, I will certainly sand, you know, up into the thousands. But this this is a great tool for, for cleaning up any of those little fine scratches that are left after the 800. And of course, clean with denature alcohol. First coat of salad bowl finish. And as you see, I didn't put any sanding sealer on. I should point this out. This could be a bit of an issue. This is actually where that little reservoir was sitting. So this is actually um, resin that's embedded in the wood. Um, we'll see if it goes away when I put the finish on it, but I don't think it's going to. Yeah, you can still see it. It's not as bad. But you can definitely see it still. So that's one consideration moving forward from this point on. What do you think of that though? Salt and pepper. <laughs> so this is the next day. The first coat finishes. Um, it's hardened up and all I'm doing here is just using the triple E again to level the surface, uh, get in any lumps and bumps and stuff that may be embedded in the finish before the next coat goes on. Again, cleaning with denatured alcohol. So yeah, I've got three cans of this food safe finish left. And it's gonna take me a little while to get through them. I don't typically do a lot of bowls in the winter time. It's mostly uh, roughing out and, uh, well now that I'm on YouTube, I'll be shooting a lot of videos as well. But anyway, when that runs out, I certainly will be looking for another shiny finish to go to. That has yet to be determined yet. Well, what do you think of that? I'm a little, I'm a little undecided, to be quite honest. With And here I'm using, of course, my handy vacuum chuck setup from one way. Yeah, the bottoms of the bowls, I typically start sanding at 180 and uh, there's no resin there. So 180 to uh, 320. Well, folks, what do you think about that? Uh, I'll bring you in for some more looks here. Keep 
depth of focus. And of course, the staining from the resin. I'll put some stills up the end like I usually do. Um, okay, so observations. The, um, the staining around the end grain on the outside, well, that's, that's the epoxy doing its job, actually. Uh, next time, I'll put the glue right along the edge of the wood, and then that way the epoxy can't wick past that and stain the end grain. The epoxy is doing what it's meant to do. It's penetrating the wood. Um, the other major thing, too, is bubbles. Zero. I never had to fill anything in this bowl. Now, if we were using CA glue and natural materials, um, that would be an issue. Uh, again, it depends on the look you're going for. If you're looking for a total natural look, then that's the way to go. Um, what else? When I was turning this, uh, the combination of the resin and the black soapstone, which is a harder soapstone um, as far as soapstones are concerned, and that might have been one of the reasons why I was having such a problem cutting it back, but the, um, if I didn't have those carbide tools, I wouldn't be able to cut that, that inlay. Uh, you know, the, the, the gouge would just go up to it and it would stop. It would take the edge off the gouge immediately. And this is what I was talking about last week too with the vase. If that vase was full of natural materials and CA glue or even the resin, I don't know if I would have been able to cut it. And so that's kind of the case here. So I'm glad that I had those carbide tools to address that. Uh, it ended up being 10 and a half by three. Uh, I did put three coats of the salad bowl finish on there and I still got one more coat to do on the bottom, but I got to get this video done and upload it. Um, yeah, uh, this is just the beginning of experimenting with natural materials and resins. So stay tuned. I got lots of ideas coming up. Uh, and by all means, suggest something too. You never know, I might do it on the channel here. So suggestions are always welcome. I do try to answer all the comments that come in, good, the bad, the ugly. I'll answer them. Um, I may be sarcastic on some, but I'll answer them. Uh, and I'm just joking around when I say sarcastic. Uh, what else? I, I don't know what we're going to do next week. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, and don't forget the links in the description below to Starbond, sandpaper.ca, and of course Designer Epoxy, who again did an awesome job here this week. Um, I guess that's it. Anyway, till next week, take care, stay safe, don't forget that thumbs up, and don't forget that bell. See you next week.